Hi everyone. I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over your gizmo lamp for this week, just because I feel like this activity can um, be challenging to navigate if you've never done it before. And so I wanted to kind of go through it with you and make sure that we're able to get through it together. And then um, I'm also going to be looking at this in the Zoom meetings this week if you guys need any extra help. So the first thing that you're going to do, here's your lab and you're going to click here and it's going to open up your gizmo. And then if you read all of this information, it's talking about prior knowledge that you have and you already know that the proton is in the nucleus, it has a positive charge. The neutron is in the nucleus, it has no charge, and the electron is in the orbitals and it has a negative charge. So the mass number, the mass number of, of an atom is equal to the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. A helium has two protons and two neutrons, so what is the mass number? Go ahead and answer that question and then answer the question about the atomic number, um, the atomic number for helium. And as you move along, it says, while most atoms are stable, some are radioactive, which means that they have a tendency to undergo spontaneous nuclear decay. The decay of a radioactive element generally results in the emission of particles. Several types of nuclear decay can be explored with the nuclear decay gizmo. On the gizmo, check that alpha decay and uranium are selected. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to select alpha decay. Okay, so alpha decay and uranium, okay? And then it says on the gizmo, check that those are, are selected, click play and then click pause when the alpha particle is clearly visible. What is an alpha particle made of? So if I hit play, So if I look at that right there, I can see that an alpha particle is made up of two purple, so two protons and two neutrons. So an alpha particle is made up of two protons and two neutrons. Then it says click play and observe. Besides the alpha particle, what else is emitted from the nucleus during alpha decay? So right here, you can see what that is and go ahead and match that. As I move on, it says reset the gizmo. So I'm going to go ahead and reset. Check alpha decay and uranium are selected. How does alpha decay change the nucleus of the radioactive atom? So we actually just looked at this a little bit. As you observe the warm up activity, an alpha particle consists of two protons and two neutrons. How will the emission of an alpha particle affect the following? So tell me how it would change the atom in the atomic number and the mass number. And it says, turn on right equation. What you see is an equation that shows the original uranium atom on the left. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, so I see my uranium atom right there on the left. And it says the boxes on the right represent the daughter product. So the daughter is what's going to be produced, the atom produced by the radioactive decay. In the top left box, write the mass number of the daughter product and press enter on your keyboard. What is this number? So we're going to write the mass number of the daughter right here. So if you look at this, okay, um, if I'm going to end up losing my four and my two, okay, and then if I do that, okay, if I do that, then see how I have 238 right here? My 238 right here um, is going to break into four plus something. So four plus something equals 238. So I'm gonna say 234. And then 92 equals two plus something, so 90. And look at what I get. So then what I can do, and then it says in the bottom left box, write the atomic number of the daughter product and write enter. What is this number? Click on the picture below, select edit, enter the mass number and atomic number of the alpha particle 
which has the same composition as a nucleus of helium. After filling in the box in the gizmos, write the completed equation below. According to your equation, what isotope remains after the alpha decay? So if you look here, what isotope remains after the alpha decay? Then what I want you to do is click on show equation, okay? And if we click on show equation, so if we try to click on show equation, we're not going to be able to show the equation right here, but if we hit play, and then we hit show equation, we're going to see our equation. And if we look at what we did write, so I just have these two products switched. So I have my thorium over here and my helium right here, but you can see, look at, bam, you got it right, okay? So that's what you're going to do for this activity. And you're going to do this with a few different isotopes, okay? So you're gonna answer the, okay, you have the parent, the parent is what you start with, and then the daughter is what you end with. Okay, the daughter is the end product. And then you're going to answer these questions doing the same exact activity. And then in general, what can you say about the mass number uh, um, when alpha particle or an alpha decay has taken place? And then helium is the second most abundant element in the universe, but it is rare in Earth's atmosphere. Most of the helium used to fill balloons and blimps must be extracted from the Earth's crust. How do you think this helium is formed? So go ahead and answer that question. And then moving on, it says reset and turn off show equation. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to turn off show equation. I'm going to select beta decay and check carbon is selected. So I'm going to now go to beta decay and see that I have carbon selected. So you have carbon, iodine, and sodium. So I'm gonna show carbon being selected and then play and watch the animation. What happens with the decaying neutron um, during beta decay? So right here, I'm looking at carbon and I'm gonna hit play and see what's happening. Okay, again, look at, I'm gonna hit play again. So what happened to the decaying neutron? We saw that there was a decaying neutron. So what happened during beta decay? What is emitted from the nucleus during beta decay? What is the mass number and charge of the emit emitted particle? So you're going to look at what's the mass number and what's the charge of the particle that you saw. You might need to go back and redo that if you didn't see it, okay? And then you're going to go through and you're going to do the same thing that we did with alpha decay, but you're going to do it with beta decay. So when you end up going and, and plugging in things here, and then you run the you run the experiment, and then you show the equation to see how you're doing, okay? And so that is activity B. And finally, activity C, it says reset and turn off show equation, okay? So we're gonna turn all of this off, we're going to reset, and then we're going to select positron emission. And then from positron emission, we wanna make sure that carbon is selected, and we're going to click play and see what happens during the decaying proton during positron emission. And you're gonna go on and complete the rest of this activity doing the same exact thing. So you're following the process of writing the equation. Now, when you're looking at writing these equations, if we go back up to this top one that we had already done, okay? And we go up here, to be able to do that, you want to double click on this box and then your drawing tool is going to show up. And then you're going to click your number, these boxes right here, and then you're gonna type in your number. So you'll type in uh, four right here and you're probably gonna to need to move boxes around a little bit, okay? Because you want to make sure that that's in that box and you wanna put a two here and go ahead and move that box around a little bit. Okay, and then you're gonna put an HE here, okay, and then move on, so on and so forth from, from there. So that's how you're going to end up entering them. And when I do that, save and close, then you're gonna see that the 4-2 helium is in there. So if you need to shift things around with that box, that's totally fine. Um, and then set that for me before you share it, before you, make sure that you turn it in.
Okay, if you have any questions, please make sure that you go ahead and reach out and I will help you to the best of my ability. And if you have questions, also you can bring them to Zoom this week. Hope that's helpful.